notwithstanding that they had no idea what he was talking about, rather preach on that next weekend as we kind of finish this chapter, John chapter 6, right? As, as, as they're quarreling, and next, next week they'll be murmuring again, biblical complaining, we call that. But just taking what he said there at its word, I couldn't help but think, I, I often reference Father Ron Rollheiser, who's an oblate of Mary Immaculate, and um, he made a great point about the, the reality of what we know to be the Eucharist, the bread, the wine that becomes the body and blood. But, but just remember, they have no idea that's what he's talking about, right? We, we have the benefit of looking at the whole story at once, and we know where that's going. They have no idea where this is going. So it, just hold that, though. That's the tension to hold. But I, but I would rather talk about this, the reality of, of the both and of bread and wine. That bread and wine are ambiguous in life and in the Eucharist. That is there anything better than the smell of fresh baking bread, right? For most bakeries, that's, that's half the sell point is just the smell of it, to get a smell of that. I think it's, is it Jimmy John's that says free smells? Like if you walk in, the, you can smell for free. But of course they know if you do, you're going to want it. And that's great. And bread is this image, is 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 life, is sustenance. It's got all these wonderful things, but the symbol of it. And yet how one gets bread is about crushing something and pulling a bunch of things together and adding some water. And then, and then what do you have to do to get bread? Bake it. Put it into fierce heat. So the imagery is in one sense at the same time, both beautiful and life-giving and mm, smells great, but then to stop and go, but what creates it is something that if we did to ourselves wouldn't be a pleasant experience. And of course, wine has the same reality behind it. Is there a better symbol of celebration than wine, right? It has no nutritional value, so to speak. Some people want to talk about how it lowers cholesterol, but Real doctors go, really? <laughs> that's, that's not what that's about. In reality, it's community and fellowship. And, and again, it's Jesus' first miracle. We can't miss that. Between 160 and 180 gallons of wine he made. And yet, as we know from Paul's letter today, wine isn't always a good thing. We all have been touched in some way by what happens to people who can't just have one. That the, 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 that can lead to debauchery or lead to an addiction. Again, very, very, these things are all very complicated. You know, imagery can fall apart for some people. You know, you, you have to see it as the bread of life. Well, what if you have celiac disease, right? Then it doesn't, it doesn't fit the same. It doesn't fit in, in Asia, right? The early Jesuits wrote back to, to Rome to say, uh, bread of life doesn't mean anything here. <laughs> they don't have any. And they asked if they couldn't make what you and I know now to be like a rice cracker because that's their daily sustenance. And Rome went back and forth on this, by the way, and ultimately decided, nope, we can't mess with that. It's what he gave us. And if you start to play there, who knows where it ends? I think we know the wisdom of that. But, but you can't deny that. That's not something that makes sense to some people around the globe. I say all that to say that, that something has to be crushed to make bread. Something has to be crushed to make wine. And so while they're both simultaneously good things, great things, imagery and symbol of community and celebration in life, they are also at the same time something different. And that's what we hold up in the Eucharist. That's, I think, why Jesus chooses these things, is for us to think in our own lives and our own experience that it can be both things. That's, I think, the way we, we best experience the Eucharist is to say it's both. It's both the celebration of life and acknowledging that for a lot of people, life is not fair. That we don't all have the same opportunity. We don't all live in the same space. As I said, it could be as simple as, what does that mean, bread of life? And it could be as complicated as the suffering that some people endure. And if you think of this in John's gospel, it starts with water becoming wine. And later the wine becomes blood. And in the ultimate moment, water and blood flow from his side when it's pierced. And that's what's going to happen in this Eucharist. 
And that's what's going to happen right in our hand, right to our mouth. And hopefully that we can hold all those things together and to say that it's, it's complicated and it's always both and because some people don't want to think about what's difficult and other people can rarely celebrate because they're so focused in on what's not fair or what's not just. And in the end, it's both. It has to be both. It's, it's the Paschal mystery all at once. Good Friday and, and Easter Sunday all being held together. Yes, with the ascension too for our theologians. Yes, it's all got to come together. It all has to be experienced at once. And that's what's offered to us today. Our own suffering, the own spaces where we feel crushed, our experiences where we feel baked in the fire, and those that we know in other people's lives. It's an opportunity for us, I think, to reflect on what it is that is offered to us. And at that moment, to also think of this community that was like, I'm sorry, what are you saying? What are you talking about? And we think about those who stay in this moment that make it possible for us to celebrate it. And our faithfulness as we approach today, really mindful of the difficulty of understanding this, that what will be placed in our hand is celebration and suffering. Is the beautiful taste and smell of bread Although some people point out when you look at a host, it's more a statement of faith to say that that's bread than it's the body of Christ because <laughs> I've yet to be at a party where someone serves, you know, thin flat wafers and says, here, enjoy. Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> and yet at the same time, we acknowledge that what's being placed in our hand is the fullness of Christ, body and soul, blood and divinity will be right in our hand. And as we take that into ourselves, we connect ourselves to all that God has loved, all that God is redeeming, all that God is trying to interact and encounter because he's asking us to be a part of it. May God be praised.